Yeah. Okay. So today we're here with Sarah Burns uh, of, I don't want to just say the Ohana Mama because there's so many different things that you're doing. Uh, Tagatow, mm-hmm. Tada Social Media. Is it Tada Social Media.com? Yes. Okay. Um, so you are kind of like a mommy powerhouse. Um, in lots of areas, and I thought it would be great to speak to you about all of that and how it kind of has evolved over time. So thank you mm-hmm. for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> and, and I know a lot about you. Obviously, we've known each other for a few years now, um, but mm-hmm. I would love to know, you know, I'd love it if you tell everybody about yourself and kind of like, you know, maybe not like super details. You don't have to go back to your high school, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, but like, you know, as far as your business goes, like how you kind of started everything where it's and where it's flowing to now. All right. Well, um, as you mentioned, I have a lot going on. I think that um, a lot of us do. So it's kind of cool to hear from somebody that's that's uh, juggling it all. And um, yeah, so I'm a mommy blogger. That was my first um, kind of thing into social media. And that's at theohanamama.com, where I talk about um, the lifestyle of living on Maui, which we moved here from the mainland, so it's kind of a cool story. And um, and I help people when they're coming on vacation here of what finding out what to do and cool things for kids. Um, and then I put a little bit of just my life on there. So that's um, kind of my personal blog, personal lifestyle blog. And then I have tag a towel, which are tags for your towels in the bathroom that I like to call them. They're like wine charms, but for your towels, so you know whose is whose keep you all clean in there and keep you reusing your towels so you're not using too much water and detergent and going crazy with too much laundry. Um, so that was my product. And then now I've ventured into kind of the online um, world in terms of business and it's called Tada Social Media. It's T-A-D-A-H and then socialmedia.com. Kind of like Sarah with an H and it's Tada with an H because there's two <laughs> different ways to spell it. Um, and really Tada has kind of become my new little baby that I'm loving and it's making me really happy. And I kind of find when things are making you really happy, do more of them. So that's what I'm diving into right now. And, um, and basically Tada social media is, is kind of like the in between, well, no, it's to help you get your social media done. Um, I, yeah, I worked with Anne at LKR for the last, um, three years and you know, the great DIY products for people, but I knew that there was a, a place where people went through their products where they needed some support still and they need somebody to just be there to help them, kind of an accountability partner and a get it done partner. And so I realized Tada was the place for that. Mm-hmm. So I like to say I'm helping you go from to do to Tada. And so far the the response to that has been amazing and like I said, it's making me happy. So I'm I'm doing that and I'm loving it. And um and I just love social media in general. Um, I come from a PR background, and I love how PR um, is really going to transition to more social media and, and doing things online. So um, it all kind of goes with what what I've been into my whole life, I guess. Yeah, I love That's it. Me. I love it. Yeah. So, so, gosh, now I'm like, oh, my God, what do I dive into first? Okay, <laughs> so I would love to just kind of get your kind of take on – launching in a sense. I mean, I know that's a big, maybe like a big topic. So let me narrow in a little bit. Um, you first really launched to, um, your tag towels mm-hmm. and right. you did that in the midst of obviously launching other people's stuff. So mm-hmm. maybe you could talk to us about how that actually worked because a lot of people, especially in fearless launching, they're, um, they're still trying to kind of make that jump from whatever mm-hmm. their day job is that might be really consuming. I mean, some people like travel a lot and it's not like, I mean, our job was really kind of at home, so it's easier right. to juggle. But, um, so I'd love to know about how you actually made that happen. Yeah. Well, you know, I, looking back, I kind of feel like Tagatel is that almost like that second child syndrome. Um, I have two children and the first one, I did a lot of stuff with him, and the second one, she kind of had to go along with everything, and that's how Tagatel kind of was for me, um, because LKR became um, my priority, my passion at the time, and I loved it, and it was amazing. Um, and then I was kind of just secretly launching this this product that had taken me four years to do, and um, so I did it kind of on the down low for mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Um, but that really meant emailing your friends and family and reaching out. And, and I do have my own um, 
you know, personality and stuff online with the Ohana Mama. So I was able to use that avenue to kind of tell people that I had launched and, you know, just emailing directly. But I did it kind of, I would say, quietly. Um, mm -hmm. Looking back, I was like, wow, I should have blown that up, you know. But the cool thing is, is that with a product especially, um, like a physical product, you know, your launch never stops, kind of. You have to you have to reinvent it. And um, I didn't have, like, you know, it's not like the cart was open uh, for two weeks and then it closed and now we're back into the program. It's And that's what we, you and I are used to with LKR. But mm -hmm. this is, like, I realized, you know, when I was kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I should have, you know, followed this launch plan. And, and it's like, yeah, that didn't work for me at the time. So I um, I did the, the reaching out via email and writing the blogs and, and um, it was kind of nice because I had key people to, to target because I had met them through the Ohana Mama. Um, but really, it's been an ongoing launch. I feel like, you know, every month is, is an ongoing, what am I going to do now for Tagatel? So, um, yeah, so I did it kind of quietly. And, and I don't know if I'd recommend that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, you want to make a splash. But sometimes you don't, you know, I just didn't want to beat myself up, up over it. Um, and, and it's a continuing thing, you know, it's continuously going on. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just launched it via social media. I had an amazing, you know, I kind of made it like a party. Um, and I did say, you have two weeks to get this special because I wanted to get that, you know, sales right away so I could get testimonials and that leads into like your whole year long plan. So I did do a little, a, a little splash, I'd say. Um, and it's been good though, and then and then I did another one later on that was asking specifically. That was more for you know retail sales for me, but then I asked for retail partners for wholesale, and um, that was a different launch, and that brought really you know a lot bigger accounts where you're selling more, and um, yeah, I don't know, I I I did it. <laughs> I, I was just excited to have something that people could purchase for me. You know, I, I love marketing, but it's kind of like marketing for marketing's sake is is fun. But, you know, you find, I was just so excited, like, yay, I finally have something for me to sell and make money. And I did. And, and you know, I got that chunk of people who could back me up and give me testimonials for me to go out and get wholesale accounts and things like that. So I think with a physical product, um, a launch, like if you're manufacturing something, a launch is a bit different because you really are doing it more for, like, building up your marketing to go get those wholesale orders. That's how I was, that's how I worked it at least. Yeah, I think that's interesting though though that um and and I now I'm actually realizing this too is that sometimes you might do some sort of a, like a little bit more quiet launch especially if you mm -hmm. have contacts and like um you know people who can kind of be your partners when you're doing that initial splash, mm -hmm. you know. I think that it, it's actually a good example of doing the launch your way that you didn't you I mean I know mm -hmm. that you I know personally you had you wanted to do like some other things too that maybe were more noticeably launch like but yes. in the end I think it was perfect and I did the same thing where I wanted to do a bunch of stuff but for with white space solution it was just kind of quiet but it still did well mm -hmm. still sells yeah you know yeah. it's no you know. I'm a total believer and and it's funny because you know it's like you and I have a we're we're in the launch world you know we're in the information product and and we know that I mean we know by like the back of our hands it's kind of like why wouldn't you do that Sarah and to me it was like that wasn't me at the time, mm -hmm. especially, and even now, ta-da, it hasn't been me. I mean, I haven't done the, the normal um, launch sequence at all, but what I'm doing, I'm enjoying, and I like it, and I think that's what people need to realize is, like, there isn't one fits all, and I think you're good at teaching people that. It's, like, figure out, especially as, like, a mompreneur who has so much going on, the normal launch may not be a perfect fit for you, like, you know, the, the normal launch formula that people do. Um, yeah. So even with Tada, I went, I, I'm definitely just more of a personal, I want to email you and, and tell you, here's what I have. And, you know, when you're emailing people, um, you know, for like bloggers or something, this is very, this is a good tip right now because as a blogger, I <laughs> get a up. lot of emails. I'm like, Listen up. Um, <laughs> I get a lot of emails as a blogger coming to me going, hey, we launched this new thing. And they give me this huge press release in the email. And I don't read them. Like people don't read those. And I'm like, instead, what they should do is seriously give me a click to tweet. I will tweet you, you know, out. That takes me one minute, and mm -hmm. I'll do that. I'll even add you to my buffer to retweet it later. But it's like, make it simple for people. Just give them a two-line or five-line, you know, email that says, here's what I'm doing. You know, if you want to talk more, let's do this. But give them a quick action to get your word out there. So right. a click to tweet in an email is so great. I mean, right there, like, don't send a press release, like, just send a click to tweet. Well, <laughs> it's like, that's a 
probably big PR people. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm encouraging people to do is have like this little leaking strategy where they start leaking things out. And that's like a perfect yeah, way to do that. it because you just start training mm -hmm. people to click on your stuff and that it's easy yeah. and that it's fun, yes. <laughs> you know? Yes, for sure. And I did do that with um, Tagatel. I mean, I leaked it for four years. <laughs> like this was... <laughs> <laughs> this is don't a do that leak. it's a slow <laughs> leak <laughs> it was a really slow drip but um but it also it got people like i mean you know when i thought of the idea of tagatel my first thing was um because i was going through the patent part of it i had heard you know be the first to kind of make it public and i know that can be really risky because people can steal it but i also wanted to make it public that i came out with this idea so pretty much people are know like Sarah Burns came out with this idea to tag your towel and right. and but that took four and so I would talk about it a lot. I was interviewed on on um, like Startup Princess before I ever had a product uh, and I just started my blog. So it you know and that's gonna be that's good hits later on for when people yeah. look at me. But yeah, and definitely I definitely leaked like you know while you're thinking of your um, while you're doing anything behind the scenes. I remember I finally got my samples back. I was about a month before I launched. And I shared a picture of my photographer taking, you know, the sample pics for me. And it was just a little bit of leak. And, and people love that. A, they're right. seen behind the scenes. And B, you're, you're just getting them interested. Like, oh, and they finally had a glimpse to, like, what my product would look like. Um, for sure. I definitely, and same with Tada. I was like, you know, you can just, just talk about what you're doing to move forward and let people know that I am working on stuff. You know, I'm not yeah. just sitting at home. It, it, it's it's kind of nice for you too. It's like a check in. I'm not in. just sitting at home. I know. I'm, I'm not, not just, just sitting, sitting here in a coffee house doing whatever you think I'm doing. No, I, right. you know, well, you just I want them to know I'm doing something, you know? Yeah. You know, also I have to say that with the Tagatel, I bet you had a ton of champions behind you who were just like, oh, yeah, you you finally, the, the product finally got out. You know, it finally yeah. finished manufacturing, you know, they had been with you through the whole process. So they were like, yes, yeah. awesome, yes. bye, you know? Most definitely. I mean, yeah. you know, let's be honest. In the beginning, your mom is going to be your biggest fan and mm -hmm. your mom is going to be your first client or first client, maybe not, but first customer. My mom um, bought white space family. solution before anybody. <laughs> <laughs> love you mom they're so great you, they're so great and and friends and family and the thing is, is that friends and family just because you know them really personally do not mean that they're not your target market and do not mean that they're not going to go and sh they're actually probably going to talk about you even more than other people so um you know reach out to wh what you have like i didn't have you know tada i have kind of a i didn't have a list on mail on um mailchimp but i have a list of people that i have a a even better, I don't just have their email, I have a relationship with. So go back to your email, those old days, and, and telephone calls when you're first doing your launch, and you're kind of like, I'm starting at ground zero, but you're not. Like, just being, you know, having friends and family, you're you're already ahead of the game. So use them. I mean, yeah. don't use them, but use them. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I think people kind of side push those things aside, you know, and even something like, you know, it seems manufactured, but like a Facebook group, those people become your network. If you don't have yeah. a list, talk about what yeah. you're doing. Let them share it yeah. for you. Don't have, don't be all like, well, that's not a real list. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and <laughs> and you know, yeah, it's 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 a great list. It's a qualified list. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome. And um, yeah, most definitely. I mean, um, through the Mogul Mom group, you know, that we're both part of. I mean, it's an incredible. Not only it's support, and then it's people to also give you feedback and and on like, hey, this wasn't good or that, you know, they're also just a second pair of eyes. When you're a solopreneur, you, you need as many other eyes as you can get. Um, yeah, so definitely don't think just because you don't have a literal like email list to email out, you have a, a great little, you know, pot of gold and that's your friends and family and they're going to help you along the way. Yeah, so sure. hear that, like start with whoever you have on your in yeah. your world, whoever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So kind of along that same line of, you know, I guess that list building thing, that is a huge anxiety for people who want to launch something. And they think, you know, I mean, I've even heard people who are kind of, who definitely have huge lists say, oh, don't launch anything unless you have this many on your list. And I kind of am like, really? You really needed to say mm -hmm. that to people? You know, every, right. everybody's having a hard enough time as it is getting their stuff out there. So my question yeah. is like, what do you think about list building? And do you think that 
it's important to like, how, how do you go about list building, you know, for newer people? Yeah. Well, I'm actually, you know, I'm doing it now. So I have a list with uh, the Ohana Mama, but those people are definitely not necessarily going to buy. I don't know. Anyway, they, they do cross over everything I do, but they're definitely like, I love Hawaii and that's why I'm kind of coming to you. So I do have that list, but now I am actually in the list building process right now with Tada. And what the number one thing is to come like to share it a like just don't hold anything to yourself and you may think gosh i've already shared this once today but you didn't get the people in the pm so definitely share on twitter like you know as you're building things up and on facebook like once a day um and just be like did you hear i have a new program i have a new product um and then being consistent with getting out your information so, you know, now people know every Friday I have a newsletter and it's amazing. I mean, it's really, I mean, you and I saw this through LKR, but it's really kind of cool when it's your own and you're like, wow, I mean, it's just different. It's very different. Mm -hmm. um, when I send out an email on a Friday, you know, I'm like, God, I on Thursday, I should have just like talked about my, my ta-da a lot so that I built the list before Friday. But it's weird because every Friday now when it goes out, I see a lot more subscribers. So people are obviously talking about it. I think I talk about it on Fridays because it came out, but you know, I'm not, it's really neat to see the jump in numbers. Um, but I'm also not stressed about it and I don't have emails coming to me going, you got a new subscriber. Um, or somebody didn't that somebody unsubscribed. I don't have those yeah. because <laughs> it's really fun to like go a few days and then you check into your MailChimp list and you're like, Oh my gosh, you know, I have yeah. this many more. And, yeah. and so, you know, just do share. And that, that goes for when you're you know, like at the store, when you're, and you know, I heard from uh, one lady, I, I don't remember, remember what it was, but she said, you know, don't be shy about talking about your program or your product or your company because you never know who your next customer is. So, I mean, you tell, you know, I was at the beach the other day and I said, oh, I had a crazy day, crazy morning, but now we're at the beach. And she said, oh, what do you do? You know, and I told her, and that, it's like, she knows people who totally need social media help. So you just never know. So, so definitely share and build your list outside of social media too. I mean, don't just get stuck in the computer. Um, yeah. You know, have those business cards and, you know, on your business card, you can have it instead of just going to your, your website, you could have it going to a specific landing page for people. Um, but yeah, it, it's been interesting to build my to list. I'm loving it. It's really neat. Yeah. But I really consistency. We all know that, like just being consistent. Um, in getting your information out there will help you build your list. It builds credibility and, and trust from people. Yeah, I think, and I think you're actually that the Tada. I I just feel like because there's so many hot kind of changes and topics right now and different mm -hmm. things cropping up and you know which I find funny because you totally leaked Pinterest way before it like flipping exploded. I was like, <laughs> hello, Sarah Burns, right there. Um, but like you know you have that great kind of platform that everybody really does want to know, like, how do I use this for my business? And um, so, so I think that, I don't know, I just see you bound for like amazing things with Tada, And I love that newsletter. It's great. So everybody should get on it. I'll put a little link below yeah. just to make sure that they do. Awesome. Um, Thanks. Cause there's definitely a lot about launching that you can kind of like tie to social media and how you approach your launch. And, and, you know, people are always concerned about maybe tweeting and Facebooking too much or, you know, to the right people on my profile, on my page, whatever. And right. I guess one of the questions that I keep seeing is, is how do I use social media for my launch if I don't really use it normally? Like, right. is there a, like a way to ramp up into it? Yes. Yes, there is. A, just start using it. That's the best thing ever, but oh. use it well, <laughs> use it well. And don't just share your stuff. Um, the way you use social media well is to interact with other people and they take notice of you and, and join, um, you know, there's parties like Twitter parties every night of the week specific to what you do. There is. And, um, I'm going to figure out how you can find them all for you and do a post on that or something. But I know for a fact, I mean, there's mom biz Mondays, mm -hmm. um, travel Tuesdays. There's these little things, you know, hashtags that you just look for those or look for somebody in your space that you look up to and, and go and interact with them on Twitter and then look at their follower or their followers or look at who they follow and just start interacting. You know, that's how I did my blog. I mean, 
I started my blog and I, I you know, it was going to be showcasing mompreneurs and I, I was on Twitter and this lady said, oh, I just got these cute shoes in for a review. And this is when reviewing kind of just started. And, um, and I just wrote her, I mean, I was just a follower of her. She didn't even, I don't think she followed me. And I wrote her and was like, hey, how did you get to review those shoes? And she was like, I'll follow you. And she DM'd me. And then all of a sudden she introduced me to all these PR people. And it was like, bam, you know, just that's what people are on Twitter for you to contact them, to you, for you to write to them, to email or not email them, but to talk with them. So just dive in that way and don't just be all about self-promotion. Um, but then you can give them a little like, you know, if somebody does something that maybe goes along with your program or your product, just say, hey, you know, I do this too. And I've had, you know, and, and we would work really well together. And they just become like a new little cheerleader online. Um, the other thing is to, if you don't have a super big list, but you know somebody that does, and you have a relationship with them or not, email them and tell them what you're doing. And um, and again, do that like click to tweet. And just be like, you know, if you could just click it real quick. I mean, I know Cool Mom Picks is an amazing site. And I think a lot of mompreneurs who have a product that would fit really well with them, they are a bit intimidated. I know I, I am because I think they're amazing to me. <laughs> I love them in that space. But they are so receptive on emails and tweets and things like that. So don't be afraid just because it's a big name with a big follower. Don't be afraid. Like, go after those people in a very genuine way. I mean, just be yourself and, and talk with them and reply to what they're talking about and just join the conversation. I mean, that's all I can say. And, and your list will grow. But, you know, don't be afraid to, A, ask for a tweet, ask for a share on Facebook with your friends, um, and and just jump in and, and be – have a conversation with people. That's the, I mean, that's the only thing I can, that's the best piece of advice is to jump in and, and talk with people and get to know them and let them get to know you a little bit. Um, and they'll be, the people are on Twitter to help other people, you know? Yeah. And I they're think, on there. Yeah. And I think if they take your advice too, of just share what you're doing, share like yes. what you're working on, whatever it is, like whatever part of the process it is, share it with people. And, um, even like, <laughs> like I did inside. I remember in B school babes, I was like, Hey, what is your, what's your, what's up with launching? I just like asked. Mm -hmm. Cause I was curious and I'm like, Oh, maybe I'll get some good information, find out what people are challenged with. But yeah. then that, that, that actually, that's what you want is you want to start conversations, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I think sharing also what, what people that you respect, what they're doing, you know, yeah. um, like from like, for instance, I don't get a chance I have to say to like fully leave a comment from Marie every Tuesday. But if I see a click to tweet, I will make sure that I click that for her because I know mm -hmm. that somebody mm -hmm. could benefit from it and someone's going to see it in the future. And same with yeah. you. Like oftentimes I'll be like, Oh yeah, Sarah click. And then I'll go read it because I like want to make sure I help yeah. you and get your, you know, get yeah. that out to people. And like, you know, yeah. yeah, I'm seeing that a lot more is that, and, and with me and with other people is, they're not commenting a lot on blogs, but they sure are sharing a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you'll see a blog that has no comments, but it has, you know, 84 tweets. It's, it's yeah. crazy. So, um, you know, definitely just make it easy for people to share your stuff too. I mean, there's little things that you can do um, if you have a blog and, and you probably do, or even a sales, if you only have a sales page, definitely put those share on Twitter and share on Facebook mm -hmm. links on there because people will share. And if you're giving good information, they want to share it so that they look like a rock star for finding good information for their I, people. So, you know, exactly. <laughs> like just make it easy for them to share. And, um, and yeah, same, same with me on Marie's Tuesdays Q and a, like, um, I love her I love videos her. and like, if I don't even have a chance to look at it, I'm just like, okay, I'm clicking to tweet this now. I'll go look, I'll mm -hmm. watch it in a second, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I do that with, and but you'll, she also, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the really cool thing about what Marie does and um, that, you know, you don't want to always sell your stuff. So you want to share good information. But what she does is she gives you a great quote that, you know, it's just, it's something where you're like, you're not going, hey, go Mar read Marie's, you know, uh, right. post. And that's cool and all. And as long as she has a good title, it, it'll get people to click through. But a good quote and like good information, like statistics, things mm -hmm. like that. People want to share that and they share it, they retweet it more. Um, so it doesn't, you know, don't make all your tweets like selling at all. I mean, do that behind the scenes thing, you know, like 
ooh, I just got new packaging for my tag and tells, and you take a picture of it, and you know, and you can put a link to your site on that one, but you're not like going, go buy my tag and tell, blah, 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 and doing like an ad on Twitter. Instead, you're just going, oh my God, look what I got, and you can, you know, put your face in there. People want to see you behind there. Um, make it personable. I definitely like social media is not the place to be, you know, the traditional advertising type of thing. You People want to see your personality, so... Yeah, they want to so be make able to connect easy, with something. Easy to share and show your personality, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, so my question then for you, like about now, just like back to launching, is yeah. do you, you know, I always, ha I have like what I call my launch crushes, but are there any launches that you just love how they are because, or any specific ones even that have come out, have been happening recently well, or? Well, I mean, you and I know and we love B school. Yeah. I mean, of course. It's like amazing. That to me is just because it's fun. And the reason I'm always like, why do I love B school? And that's Marie Forleo and her B school program that's coming out again. But um, the reason I love it is because it was so fun and it wasn't boring and stuffy. And it really kind of didn't fall. Well, she gave you great information for free, right? So it's like, we, I think people definitely. Even if they didn't buy, they became really, really big cheerleaders of B-School because there was such amazing information given for free. So I love uh, the way she's done it. I'm trying to think who else. Um, she's my fave, but I really, I mean, the normal people I'm thinking, I don't love that much. Because, see, I think it's hard for me because I can see the back end of things. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I know, right. okay, I'm going to get this email this day, and then the next day I'm going to get that email because we're so into the info product thing. So sometimes I don't like that. But I'm trying to think. Um, uh, Aaron Blasky's cool. I like when she launches something because she launches it, and it's kind of like, hey, this is just for you. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of like a – um, it's very, she gives you a lot of information so you can digest it. Um, and she's like, this isn't on the site. This is just for you. She does it just a list. Um, and I like that because it makes you feel special. Um, I love when Laura would do like, um, you know, pre-sales for her list. Mm -hmm. I like, I like those kind of launches, um, where you're, you get, you know, a uh, special treatment because you signed up. Right. I'm trying to think of big launches like other people that aren't in that world. Um, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank right now. No, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, guess, I guess I, you know, I think that, I think you kind of said it. It's like launches that they feel kind of, you're not like, oh, wow, what's this out of nowhere? Like a, a format that you don't understand. Like the, mm -hmm. the videos work for, for Marie because that's her thing. And like, you want to see her, right. you want to see her doing right. her thing. And that's why those, like, you. Yeah. I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what she's shooting right yeah. now, you know? Yeah, I know. And she's fun. She keeps it very, very fun. And, mm -hmm. and, um, it's like a break in your day. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you want to watch that. You're like, cool. I can't wait to watch it. Um, I mean, do, like that. And it's, do not just all times, copy. How many times did you watch the music video? We're behind the scenes. Oh my gosh. Like a lot. I mean, so <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I gotta get, I, I gotta get my groove on. <laughs> I know, so we're feeling that way, and we work in the program. It's yeah. like, you know, imagine you're, you know, and it's just such, it's so refreshing because um, because Marie can do it. I mean, yeah. I can't see a guy really doing that kind of no. stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, but she just does it, and I think every year it's been better and better. So it's, it, you're always kind of like, what is she going to do next, you know? Yeah. Um, and you, and it doesn't get, like, soggy and stale and 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 boring, you know, it doesn't get boring. That That's for sure. She's great at that. Do you think that you're going to do some webinars or calls or anything like that? Do you think that's going to be part of your thing know. or you're not sure? I don't know. You know, what's so funny is, I mean, I used to have like a mom TV show for a very short, short uh, while. Momversation? Um, well, I was on Momversation. Oh, okay. Um, but then I did like a mom TV, um, like a weekly show. And just because seriously, I see you didn't know, <laughs> but it doesn't of surprise me. But <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, because of technical issues, I, and always, and actually, at that time, I had my daughter home, so that was always tough. You know, it'd be like trying to get her to go to sleep, and it was just so stressed out, like yeah, stressed. Get the shooting like, done. Go to sleep so I can up. do this. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, but now I have more time, um, and I might do. I think for me, I might do like a, a Q and A webinar. I think I realized, like, that's what I love. You know, when I worked at LKR and I was first in customer service, 
that's what I love to do is like help people out one on one like through email and answering their questions and and um, you know people come up with great ideas through their questions for you so mm -hmm. it's like you know I, I, I think I, I don't know I was just driving home this morning I was thinking maybe I'll do a Q&A call like that type of thing I don't oh. I'm not quite sure though I'm not sold on the webinars for me yet though yeah not yet we'll see yeah yeah we'll see I mean it's it's always like whatever your format is maybe you can do like teleconferences because yeah. you're really good on the phone <laughs> yeah <laughs> no I, I want to do something different yeah. I'm, I'm definitely not the I don't think you know, know where your, your strengths are and stuff and, and what you like. And really, I mean, you and I have always talked about this. It's like doing what you like. And mm -hmm. I know I'm doing something right right now because I'm really happy and, um, and, and I'm enjoying it. Like I, it's not a burden to do this and it's not something like, Oh God, you know, where you wake up in the morning, you're like, like kind of, I don't want to look at my phone to see what, you know, or in my email to see what's going on. But now I'm like, Oh my gosh, like checking my email, you know, I'm excited about things. And I think um, that excitement too, to go back to launching is what people will feel, you know, and yeah. that's kind of the key to like Marie's and, um, and, you know, Laura's creating fame program. There's excitement in it because you can tell that the person doing it loves it. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I don't feel that love yet for webinars for me. And I don't know if it's cause I'm, I'm just so kind of used to them or, I'm, I don't glad, know. We'll I'm actually glad you're saying that because I, I do think people feel like a pressure to do like this live call or this live webinar or whatever, yeah. like, because yeah. it's such a format that so many people use, but I don't yeah. think it's necessary if it's not, if it's not like, like furthering your passion for what you're launching, then. Right. Well, I know that, well, here's the deal. It's kind of hard, right? Cause we know that when you do a live webinar and you sell in the webinar, you make money and you sell like usually. I mean, you, we know that. I mean, it's been proven to us. So I don't want to say, like, no, I'm never going to do that. But I just think I would do something differently. Like, maybe I will start a show or, or even be on other shows. Like, you don't have to have your own webinar. And that's a great – this is something so great um, is that, you know, I have a small list for Tada, But, um, like, Heather at the Mogul Mom has a bigger list. And she has people that we, it would work really well. And maybe I'll be on her show or mm -hmm. maybe I'll do a webinar with – the Pinterest ladies, you know, and, and go that route. You know, you can have a webinar and invite your whole list and invite everybody on the internet when you're um, being interviewed by somebody else, like by you, Anne. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love it because <laughs> Anne is amazing at this format and, um, and, it, and she makes it easy for you to do it. But if I was on my own, I might feel a little weird, you know, yeah. like it's, it's so nice to talk to somebody else. That's how, that's what I got to say. I think that's why I like the Q and A too because you're talking with somebody else rather than just like talking to a microphone or, you know, your screen. So maybe, maybe I'm definitely can, more of like, I like to see people and yeah. stuff like that. Well, I know you don't, I know you have like a thing. Maybe you don't really like Google plus a lot, but maybe the hangouts will get, maybe it'll get better yeah. now that Kevin yeah. Rose is in there, but, um, yeah. and you can like do little hangouts, little cute social media hangout yeah. or something. Yeah, no, I definitely like that. I think I'm just more of a, a person driven webinar than a than a me driven webinar if that makes sense right. i'm definitely Absolutely. like the audience would drive it rather than and having that interaction than um than doing like a straight webinar for yeah. sure i, I know I that about you. myself so I hear like you. why why put myself through the i'm gonna do a webinar and be all stressed out about it rather than be like let's just do a q a call or even you know blog talk radio or you know i've always came to you and be like let's get a show going on or something i, know. Just, I, I like that better than than doing the solo Sarah. So. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely nice to be with another person and also having the, the audience drive it for sure. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's see if I have any other questions here. I know that I – okay, so here's what I want to know. What, what are your favorite – like not social media necessarily, but tools because mm -hmm. we've got a lot of tool lovers who want to know like about like the easiest kind of tools to kind of set everything up. So you're not yeah. like constantly like doing something different every time. Right. Um, well, I'm a huge lover of Google apps and Google docs. Um, I mean, it's kind of, so you know that you love something when you're like sitting there with family members who are totally not in this world and you're telling them all about Google apps. And like, you know, I had to go to California a couple weeks ago on emergency and I left my computer at home, which is huge. It was, you know, I literally had two hours to leave. And at the time my husband's computer broke. And so I was like, I knew that he would need it. And I was like, I don't need it. And my husband was like, really? You don't need anything on there? I said, no, because 
for things on Google Apps. And that's amazing to have that freedom to be able to go anywhere and, and use them. So that's for Google Docs and Mail and Calendar and even drawing things and Excel spreadsheets. Um, so I love that. Um, I love MailChimp now. I've had kind of a love-hate relationship with it, but now that I love it, now that I've like dive, you know, I dove into it and um, and I love it. And there's a lot more to Mailchimp than than uh, you initially think. So I'm loving that, and I love Buffer, which I wrote about on Tada mm -hmm. social media. That is just, I love it. Don't you love yeah, it, Anne? I do. I do. I have a problem right now with my social media kind of apps that I'm using. I find myself. Mm -hmm straddling too many fences when it comes to that and I just have to stick with buffer and I do Hootsuite as well just I I don't actually do yeah. that Eileen loads everything in there so I think I just right. need to stick to buffer because I really love it it's super easy yeah no I think um and that's another thing too is there are so many tools out there don't have to use them all like only use two or three that work for you um you know buffer is great because so buffer is the thing that if you're reading an article you'd have buffer already on your um your browser and instead of like tweeting it right then because then you're probably going to go to another article and read it and you'd be your whole twitter stream would be bombing with all these articles and it'd be wasted because it's just mm -hmm. you know spread it out um you just go to buffer and you would click it and it would add it to your little queue and it'll send them out like periodically on your twitter and facebook and i love it i actually like it better for twitter than for facebook but um Facebook, it's cool because I only do it twice a uh, day, and you can set up your time. So I love Buffer. That's my number. I just think because then you're actually doing, like, three things at once. You're reading an article. You can leave a comment, and then you buffer it. It's, like, done. done, done you know, yeah. and, and then your Twitter is working while you're working on other stuff. Um, and I like Hootsuite, but I like it more for um, scheduling stuff. I, yeah. I like it um, for that, especially if you're doing, like, a contest of some kind. Um, I did a contest with... Carly of Digital a few years ago, and we just loaded everything on Sunday, and she had like six tweets going out a day, and we weren't doing it. You know, it was all mm -hmm. going on its own with Hootsuite. So I really like that. Um, uh, WordPress for sure, um, which I'm just finding, you know, I think you, like, if you've been on WordPress for a while, you take it for granted. But when you go and you see somebody else who's not on WordPress and you ask them, you know, I have a mompreneur, we're trying to transfer, I'm transferring her to WordPress right now. And because um, she had a, a, one of the old school sites where you had to use, a, you know, a webmaster. And, oh, my gosh. And she really, really is amazing to me when I'm going, okay, and I need this information and this and this. And she's going, I, ha I have none of that. My webmaster has all that. And I can't get in touch with my webmaster. And she, she takes about two weeks to get back to me. I'm like, oh, my goodness. So, WordPress to me is like the biggest freedom for a solopreneur um, or mompreneur or any company. You know, Joomla's great. Anything that you can update on your own um, is awesome. So WordPress for a web website. And then I like Equid if you're um, having e-commerce. It's mm. for um, e-commerce. Or you can use, um, like, Luthings came out with a cool e-commerce right. site. Right, awesome. Now. Yeah. Um, but those are kind of my... My core ones I use every day. I'm trying to think what else I use. I don't know. That's it. I, buffer, if you do that, it, I just feel like it's, like I said, it's like one, two, three. Read, comment, buffer. <laughs> Read, yeah. comment, buffer. <laughs> and now sometimes, you know, I think, is it like kind of Pinterest where you have like a little buffer in your browser yeah. bar kind of? You put it up there. Yeah, it is. Um, for me, I'm on Firefox, so it goes down in the right-hand corner, and I can just click that, and it pops up my little buffer dashboard and adds it to there. Um, and, yeah, so it's super easy. And then Pinterest is great, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I'm just, I just love Pinterest. I use Pinterest now more than Google um, for things like crafts or um, food. Like, what do I want for dinner? And I go on Pinterest and Google mm -hmm. rather than, like, I don't Google. I don't Google on Pinterest, but I go to Pinterest and search. Yeah. Um, I go there for sure yeah. for the food stuff. Right? All the time. It's like, what am I going to have for dinner? And I go back to my my uh, my board, and, and I'll be like, oh, okay. And it's so easy. I love it. Um, so, and then, you know, all of those things that I've been talking about, you can get on, like, for your iPhone. Um, and I think being a mompreneur and always, you know, you're not a – in your, you know, or just a solopreneur or, or anything, anybody who doesn't want to be stuck at their computer, when the, when something comes with an app, it, it makes it so much better to Definitely. use, easier to use, and you're, you're going to use it. So 
I use Buffer, Pinterest, even WordPress. Um, I've, I've written posts on my phone. At the beach. It's not that great, but I've yeah. done it. Yeah, it's not that great, but it can work. <laughs> it can work. It's great for, um, you know, because some people use Tumblr because they want to share a lot of pictures and, um, or, you know, any of those kind of uh, Posterous, sites. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I'm like, well, oh, I can easily upload my pics. If you're doing like a picture post, it's good on your WordPress on your phone. But otherwise, you don't want to write too much. But, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, okay, so let's see. I want to ask if there's any kind of, I mean, I feel like you've given a lot of advice already for people who are just starting and putting their launch together and about staying, you know, being passionate about what you're doing, having fun, mm -hmm. just getting to know people. But is there any other kind of like last piece of advice that you would give to people who are launching or want to launch or, or I don't know, are scared to launch, you know, for the, that first time out. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you know, kind of what we've talked about, like share with your friends and get feedback from them first. Um, it's a little bit easier. Actually, I will say really quick, it was harder for me to share my tags with my friends and get feedback from them than it was to like, just go to a stranger mm -hmm. because you know, you're like, oh, what are my friends, or even Tada, it's like, well, no, not Tada. Tada had been like, whatever. But Tag It's Out was definitely like hard for me to go to my friends at first because they're your friends. And, right. and it's very, that's your baby too. You're embarrassed so it's like going, here's my baby. I was what embarrassed. if your baby's ugly? I was embarrassed. What? I was embarrassed yeah. for some reason. And it wasn't like I have anything to be embarrassed about, but I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know. Well, it's like this new, it's like a different part of you that, because you don't usually like yeah. tell your friends about business, 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 like all of a sudden it's this new part of you and, and you believe in you, but you're like, they know, they know all of you. So it's just different, but now they know some history um, that they know some. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyways, just get out there with your friends and, and, or, or if you're in a group, I would join a group. Like I know that you guys have a wonderful group here and on Facebook and, and do that and share off all your stuff in there. And, you know, you kind of test the market that way. But really, if you're passionate behind it, don't be scared. Um, the other thing is don't be a perfectionist. And that's just very hard for me because being a perfectionist is, um, will hold you back. And that's just, seriously, that's probably the number one piece of advice for me is that, you know, get it out there. And I know with my, even my Chidon newsletter, I'm like, oh, it's not perfect. Or I want it to be perfect every single week. And, and it's going to be perfect for somebody one week and not for somebody the next week. And I have to just be like, it's okay and get it out. So um, don't get stuck in perfection land and overthinking it. And are they really like, you know, are you wanting to be perfect or are you scared? So just like get over it and put it out there. And the cool get thing is, it. get over it. Seriously, like get over it. And the very great thing is if you're building a program or even a website or anything that's uh, like that, you can change it. So, you know, I, I'm kind of like, you know, people be like, okay, you know, once you launch, I don't feel like that's the end of it. It's ever evolving. You're, um, once you get clients that are taking that program that you're doing, um, they're going to kind of help you shift things that, you know, you may, you had a, a perfect plan, but then all of a sudden everyone's like, you know, Tuesday night calls don't work for me. Okay, we're moving to Friday. You know, I mean, just it's ever evolving and um, and growing, and, and you definitely want to always be growing. So don't be. It's not going to be perfect the first time, and nor should it be because you're going to learn a lot. Um, yeah. And and you know, just always evolve. So I say just jump in, be first, and go for it, and um, and have fun. And if it ever becomes like this super stressful thing, like just figure out ways that you can get back to that fun. So, you know, maybe, you know, you're, oh, sorry. Um, uh, maybe you are, um, you, you know, you're, you're like, I have this program and I love it, but there's a little part that I don't love. See if you can get somebody else to do that little part, you know, or you're mm -hmm. scared of doing it. So um, don't be perfect and just, just go for it. And everyone loves, actually people love you not being perfect. You know, a little yeah. secret. People love that because nobody is perfect. So it's yeah. nice and it's fun to see that. Yeah. I love it. Thank yeah. you so much, Sarah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you. we'll, we'll chat again very soon and, um, and I'll be speaking to you about other things too, <laughs> but um, thank you. Th yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us today and, and, uh, letting us into your world. Cause I know you have a lot going on as the buzzer just told me, <laughs> I um, know you're like, <laughs> no, I have something else coming right up. Um, so Thank you very much. And I'll let you know we have any questions from the crew inside. Maybe yeah. you can come in and 
do any do a little special special guest that. appearance at some point. I would love that. All right, have All right. fun and um, just go for it and and just have fun. Okay, great. It's great. <laughs> All right, thanks, Anne. Thanks.